Welcome to Data Bit Technologies. I am Shah and this is part 4 of SQL Server video series. In this session we will learn how to add a default constraints. In part 3 of this video series, we've seen how to create tables. We had created person and gender tables. And we have also seen how to add a primary and foreign key constraint. If you look at the sample database, that we have created in last session. We had created these two tables, person and gender, along with following columns in each of them. In gender table we had two columns, ID and gender. And in persons table we had four columns, ID, name, email and gender ID. If you look at persons table, there are four columns, three of them have a not null constraint. But if you look gender ID, not null constraint is not applied, that's means, while inserting new record to this table, it can allow nulls to be entered in this column, gender ID. On other hand in ID, name and email columns nulls are not allowed to be entered. So let's insert a record into this person table. You can either do that graphically, or using an insert query. Let's do it using an insert query. So insert. Enter the table name. I want to insert the data into this person table. And I want to insert the values for ID, name, email, and gender ID. What about gender ID? As gender ID allows null. You may or may not supply a value for that. Let's suppose we don't want to supply a value for that column. And then I will not enter values for this columns. Let's suppose ID of the person is going to be 7. And the name of the person is Rich. An email is r at the rate of db.com. Okay, and if you look at this, we haven't supplied gender ID, since it's nullable column it means this column allows nulls. So when I execute this query, and when we select the rows from this table, table. You should see that rich record has got null there. Now what we want to do. If you look at the gender table. If you don't know the gender of a person. There should be some way that if I insert data in such way. 3 for unknown gender entered automatically by default. So how do we do that? Using a default constraint. Let's insert a record into person table and I don't supply a value for gender ID column. I want the 3 to be inserted by default. Okay let's see how to do that so to add a default constraint. Okay here is the syntax altering an existing column to add a default constraint. So obviously we are changing the definition of the table. So we have to say alter table, person. And we want to add a constraint. And give a meaningful name to that constraint. And default. And then whatever is the value wants to be default value. In our case it's going to be 3 for gender ID column. So let's do that. So to add the default constraint, alter, table, and which is the table that we want to alter is person table. So person. Add, constraint and give the constraint a meaningful name. This is a default constraint so I would give an abbreviated form df. And we are adding this constraint to person table. So include the table name, person. And for which column we are adding that we are adding it for is gender id column. So specify the gender id column as well. And then what type of constraint is this? This is a default constraint. And now you can specify the value. In our case the value is 3 for gender ID column. So 3 and gender ID. So when we execute this query. Look at that. If you look at the table person table. Now if I go ahead and refresh the constraints folder of person table. We should see the default constraint created there. Now if you, if you look at the records in person table. It's got 7 records.
and Rich has got null. Now let us insert somebody here like Mike, and his ID is 8, and my at db.com. And if you look at this query we're still not supplying the gender of this person Mike gender now but we have added a constraint, so what should happen now? If you do not supply a value for gender ID column then this constraint insert default value, which is 3 for the gender ID. Let's execute and see what happens. So when I execute this, one row has been affected. And if you select all rows, look at this for Mike we haven't supplied value. So it took the default. But on the other hand, if I supply a value, let us suppose I'm going to enter somebody and going to pass the gender ID as well. Let's suppose I'm going to insert Sarah. I had email ID is s at db.com and I want to supply gender ID for her. I know she's a female, so I'm going to pass the value for that. So when you pass the value, we're specifically saying Sarah's gender ID is 2. So now, the default will not be picking in. So this value will be stored for Sarah. So when I execute that. And when you checked person. You should see that gender ID which we have supplied. And finally, let's say I'm going to insert maybe John's record whose ID is 10 and email ID is j at db.com. Now I am passing in the gender ID. But I'm specifically want to insert null. So you're specifically passing null value, which means default value will it not be assigned. Now let's execute and see what happens. So I executed that query. If you look at the result for Johnny, it didn't take the default, because if you supply a value, even if it is null, the default constraint will not be executed. Instead, the value that you have supplied will be inserted into the table. But in the other case, if you miss the value or if you don't supply a value, then default will be considered. Okay, so we have seen how to alter an existing column to add a default constraints. It's also possible that when you're creating a table or if you want to add a new column to a table for an existing table and you want to have a default for that column, it is still possible adding a new column with a default value to an existing table and this is the syntax. To add this new column you add that column specifically the data type whether it allows nulls or not. And then constraint, give it a meaningful name and the default value for that. Okay now let's see how to drop a constraint. You can use alter table command drop constraint and the constraint name. So if we want to drop this constraint, we can use drop constraint statement. But before that, we have to use alter table. So alter table person drop constraint and the name of the constraint. So when I press F5, the constraint will be dropped. So if we refresh this constraints folder, that should be gone. So it's possible to assign a default to a column using the default constraint. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.